Thank you very much. Goodness. And although it would be wonderful to be the member beside me, I'm just Elgin Middlesex London. So thank you very much. And I'd like to thank the Minister of Finance for his, his speech, informative speech. But I do have a few questions for him. And it's directed for conversations that we've had with CFIB and the president of CFIB, Dan Kelly. And I just want to read a couple of his quotes. I, I do know that uh, prior to politics, uh, the minister had great dealings with investments. So I just want to ask him these things. In the two quotes that I'm going to read to you today, if you could just respond, if the member could just respond to that, that would be fantastic. The first quote is, it is tremendously disappointing to see that the finance ministers are putting Canadian wages, hours and jobs in jeopardy and willfully moving to make an already shaky economy even worse. Despite all the talks, it appears that the jobs and the economy are not particularly high priorities for the governments that have signed off on this deal. And that was from President of CFIB, Dan Kelly. Secondly, he noted, Two-thirds of small firms say they will have to freeze or cut salaries, and over th one-third say they will have to reduce hours or jo jobs in their business in response to the CPP hike. I'm just wondering if the Minister of Finance can speak about these things, because I know CFIB was not at the table when they were consulting small businesses, and since small businesses is part of the middle class, because in my community of Elgin Middlesex London, those small businesses are owned by the middle class. I wonder if the Minister could speak on that. Thank you. The Honourable Minister. Well, I'd like to thank the, uh, the member for uh, her comments and her question and uh, provide some background both on uh, the process that led us to get to the conclusion that we should uh, work together to enhance the Canada Pension Plan and the uh, impacts that uh, we expect that that will have on Canadians and on our economy. So first of all, the process. Uh, we, uh, we were very clear with Canadians in our election platform that we wanted to work to enhance the Canada Pension Plan because we recognized that so many Canadians were uh, finding themselves with uh, less of a, uh, an opportunity for pension down the road because of declining pension plan participation. That led us to uh, present that to Canadians. We then, uh, as you know, uh, presented that to our uh, provincial counterparts to talk about that, uh, that decision and got consensus that we all were seeing the same thing, a real challenge in future uh, opportunities for Canadians to retire in dignity. So what we came up with was an approach that was very uh, gradual but led to significant impacts over the long term. The gradual nature of that approach, starting in 2019, going out to 2025, means that for both individuals and for businesses, there's an opportunity to move very gradually, having a modest impact. More importantly, we then did research to show, and just if one more second, to show that in fact the long-term economic impacts are positive for the economy, are positive for employment, and that's the research that leads us to say this is the right thing to do.